be different. There should be a difference. And I'm not going to tell you that problems aren't going to come. I'm not going to tell you that you're not going to suffer. I'm not going to tell you that you're not going to have trials and tribulations because Jesus said we are. But what? He said, but what? What did he say after in this world you're going to have trials and tribulations? What was the next thing he said? Why? I have overcome the world. <clears throat> but we're so carnally possessed that we say, oh really? Could you imagine? That's what we say to him. Every time we fret and worry and shake a fist and go, but God, but God, but God. He's still smoking. He's still drinking. He's still drugging. He's still this. She's still that. I, I got, what? Don't you get it? It's not about them. It's about him. And if it's got to be this thing that we say repeatedly over and over and over and over and over, then do it over and over and over and over. Take every thought captive Amen. until it conforms to the mind of Christ. He didn't go to that cross so that I could have a good relationship with my husband. He didn't go to the cross, bleed, get beat up, and nailed to that tree so that my son would stop doing drugs. I'm sorry to tell you that. I would like that to happen, but that's not why he went to the cross. He went to the cross because he was obedient to what his father wanted him to do. And he became sin because he loved us. Because we were covered in. Let me tell you about my, my, my testimony my, very, very quickly. We talk about testimony. Let me tell you what I was prior to Christ. I want you to get a picture of this. And if this disgusts you, good. Because this belongs to all of us here. I was in a cesspool. A sewer. Of my own filth. My own excrement. I was covered in it. And I was drowning in it. And I was so full of pride that because I wasn't like that sinner over there, I wasn't that dirty. I was covered and going down for the count. And when I looked up, he was there. And he started coming towards me. And he was white, dressed in a white robe. And you know what he did? He dove in. He dove into my cesspool and sewer of an existence. And he became covered in my filth in my pride, in my arrogance, in my fury, in my rage, in my hurt. And he lifted me up and he put his mouth on my mouth and he breathed life into me. And he still wasn't done. And he gave me a robe after he washed me in his blood and made me clean. And he picked me up and he put me on a rock and he gave me a robe of righteousness. And he called me his daughter. That's 
and he said, you and I are one. And nothing, nothing, no one can ever separate us now. Nothing. Nothing. And if you go back into that cesspool again, And I will keep pulling you out. And I will keep breathing in you. And I will keep loving you. And I will keep calling you my daughter. And I will never be. Because again, you and I. <laughs> I'm going to go back and say, please, please, God, please. And then I go from this. And then I go like that. And then I get pulled away. Then he goes, I got you. I got you. You keep your eyes on me. I got him. <laughs> So when does this happen? It occurred at the cross when Jesus himself became separated from his father because he and the father and because he loves us he had to become separated from him for a while and the agony that he cried out on that cross when he said my God my God why have you forsaken me he separated himself from his father so you and I could be one with him are you with me let's go to Galatians please I'm going to go to Galatians now chapter 2 Verse and the King James has something in here that the other versions don't have. And it's a little word. It's a two-letter word. It's all the different Is everybody there? Is this good? Are you with me? Okay, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am, this is Paul speaking now, Paul the Apostle. crucified with Christ. Can you say that to yourselves, please? I am crucified. I am crucified with Christ. Paul does not say follow Christ. For I have determined to imitate Christ. All very worthy and noble things, right? You say, I want to follow Christ. I have decided to follow Jesus. It's one of my favorite songs. That's not what he says. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. Ah. 
So what does that mean? Uh, Pastor Diana spoke a while ago on our identity, and that has been with me ever since the youth retreat here. And, and it's, it's come up in different uh, sermons and different messages that has been preached from this pulpit about identifying ourselves with Christ. And she gave such an excellent um, breakdown of what that means. And when Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, he says, I have been identified with him in his death and later on in his resurrection. I have been crucified with Christ. Get up, up on that cross. See, there's this false gospel that's out there that says, um, he did it all, he, and he did. But see, the devil comes and he mixes up the truth with the lies. He's never gonna give you an out, out rough lie because we know, right, we know, we think we know, but he mixes it up. And he says, well, he paid the price. You don't have to do it anymore. He says something different. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. Now, it, it certainly doesn't mean that I'm, that I'm able to take away the sins. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Paul goes on to say, nevertheless, nevertheless, I, what? I live. Mm. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith not in the Son of God as some translations say but it says of the Son of God it wasn't Paul's faith it's not your faith it's not my faith my faith gets me zip because my faith one day is going to be sky high and then you know I look at somebody or I think of something and it's gone. It's gone. So it's not my faith. When Jesus said you have to have faith like a mustard seed, he knew what he was talking about. He absolutely knew what he was talking about. And he was the one that gave us that. We don't have anything apart from him. And he says it right here. He says, which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who what? Loved me and gave himself for me. So what does that mean? I have been identified with him in his death and resurrection. Everything that Christ did for me on the cross is now done in me. What he did for me by forgiving me my sins and making me white as new and giving me breath if that's what if that is not good enough is now being done in me and in you it goes way deeper than just somebody doing something really nice for us somebody doing an incredible job of of taking a beating being you know really seriously it's more than just him doing something for us it's not about that. It's about us now in Him. Becoming one with Him. That kind of commitment and that intimacy, that oneness in giving myself to God, that knowing, like the Old Testament knowing in a marriage relationship, gives the Holy Spirit the chance to impart to me the holiness of Jesus Christ. I'll say it again. That commitment, when I identify with Christ as one, I and him and me, him and him and I and together, I and him and him and me. I'm sorry. That that whole intimate thing, that whole intimacy gives the Holy Spirit, which we now have in us because of the finished work of Christ, because as I said earlier, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all three in us, gives the Holy Spirit now the opportunity, the chance to impart to me the holiness of Jesus Christ, because Jesus says, be ye holy as I am holy. No wonder why we look at that and go, no way. 
You're right. No way. Because we're still thinking he's over there or he's up there and we're over here. And that's not the way it goes. It, it, it's not going to work. And this, my beloved, has absolutely nothing to do what's whatsoever with religion, relationship, fellowship, nothing. <coughs> Moves that right out of the water. Right out of the water. The enormity of saying that I am a Christian with Christ, C-H-R-I-S-T, right there. I am a Christian. Takes on a whole new meaning. It takes on a whole new meaning. It says that I, you and me, we are no longer known as anyone else. God gave Saul a new name, Paul. Gave Abraham, Abram a new name, Abraham. He has given us a new name, Christian. It doesn't, Paul says, but nevertheless, I'm still in the flesh. It doesn't take away our individuality in that sense that we are, it, it, it's not that. It's different. And I'm going to explain that to you in a moment. We may be moms, we may be sisters, we may be in our job titles, whatever your job is, secretary, doctor, lawyer, whatever it is, cook, chef, whatever it is that your title is, your title means nothing. Your job means nothing. Nothing. Zero. All smoke. Going to go up in a heartbeat. The thing that we're worried about. The thing that we're fretting over, the thing that I'm losing five pounds over, the thing that you're gaining five pounds on, whatever it is that we're doing that is killing us will go up in smoke. These kids, our teenagers, this youth, they have just as much a right as we do to be called the sons and daughters of the Most High God, to be called a Christian. It is up to them. It is their choice. They've heard this all. They're not ignorant. They're not blind. They know how to read. This thing isn't exclusively for anybody over 18 years old. Anybody younger than 18, well, would put it aside. That's how I grew up. This is for them. This is not for us to fret and worry and lose sleep and lose our lose our relationship lose our oneness with god i gotta tell you something else guys that's making them an idol that's idol worship that's putting them up on an altar and you may not think you're bowing down to them but yeah you know you are we are i'm a mother i know i've done it and to an extent i still do it and that's not to say that you don't care and that you don't love and that you don't do all those things that God has called you to do. But without being in him, you and I are not going to know how far to go with this. We're not. We have no boundaries. We don't know what the boundary line is. It's a bloodline, ladies. It's a bloodline. It's his bloodline. <laughs> Paul continues on in this and he says, nevertheless, I live. Our individuality remains, but the ruling disposition and what that means, your disposition, your personality, what makes you different from somebody else, that thing that God has put in you, that, that little personality trait, disposition, whatever it is, that becomes radically altered. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Don't go near her. She's got a really bad temper. <laughs> Don't go. Don't go near him. If you look at him cross-eyed, he'll beat the bejesus out of you. I mean, it was really. But that's just his personality. That's just his way. That's just who she is. She curses like a sailor. Wow. Yep. That's just who she is. They treat me like garbage. Well, what a month. They don't listen to me. After all I've done for them. Repeatedly. 
and they can't even do this whatever this is insert it I've broken my back working 12 hours a day 40 years and this is this is it this is how you treat your mother this is how you treat your father this is what you do and feeling perfectly justified in saying that when I trace it back that's because I didn't know him that's because I put my son right here on the altar and then in typical devilish fashion after I did that started accusing him I did this I did that you did this and that may all well be correct in terms of how we what we provide no it's not correct it's not it's just not I'm sorry you know, I'm sorry. I want to make you feel good. But the truth of the matter is, it's not. That was never the way the relationship, if you want to talk relationship, was supposed to be. Never. Because I didn't have it right with him, with God. I was not one with him. My husband had a piece. My son had a piece. My mother had a piece. My job had a big chunk. This one had a chunk everybody and everything and not that I was all this because I had my own stuff what I was doing to ah. medicate myself to comfort ah. this flesh ah. Ah. so once again ah. our individuality remains but the ruling disposition of how God of what we think we are it becomes radically altered our same human body remains okay we are going to look i am going to look like this you are going to look like that you have blonde hair i have dark hair you have blue eyes i have black eyes it doesn't matter that stays the same what gets changed the old satanic right to myself done done i don't have any more rights to myself it's over the minute i said Georgian is a Christian. Boom. The door shut on any rights that I have or think I should have or believe I am owed. After all. Susie, as soon as you can see the body movement. After all. See how puffed up? Eyebrow goes up. No. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Now it's tough. Ow. And he goes on to say, and the life that I now live in the flesh, not the life that I long to live, or the life that I pray to live, but my life right now, the one that you see in front of you, your life, Paul says, I live by the faith of not my faith in, but the faith of who? The Son of God. It's Jesus' faith. Nothing to do with it. Not even my faith. It's not even my faith. Nothing. He takes everything. Not even my faith. Are you beginning to get the enormity of this thing? It's nothing, nothing, nothing about me, nothing. I live by the faith of the Son of God, not Paul's faith or my faith or yours, but the faith that Jesus imparts to us. That's that mustard seed faith. He gave it. He said, here. He had to give it to me because I didn't have it. Got it? Zip. Not even a mustard. Because when he says, if you have the faith as, as small as this, as a mustard seed, you can tell that mountain to move. What? That's because I'm still thinking that I can move that mountain. Then all I have to say is, okay, mountain, move. The arrogance. When I tell you I was covered in my filth, that's just a small. Yeah. In closing, you still need to answer the question, 
that I posed at the beginning of this. Do you know him? Or do you know of him? We must die to this sinful nature. The word says that just before he, he destroyed the world with Noah, I'm sure we're going to get to that in, in, in the Tuesday Bible studies. It says that he, that he was sorry that he had made man because every inclination in man's heart was to do what? Evil. Could you imagine him being sorry he made us? We must die daily to this sinful nature. We must do battle in our minds. That's why we say we have the mind of Christ. That's why it's a complete picture of intimacy because we need to know him body, soul, and spirit. This body, young ladies, does not belong to you. What you wear and how you wear it and this goes for us as well, all right? Because there's a lot of 60-year-olds running around with something on, you know? Please. It doesn't belong to you. When you say, I am a Christian, ask him. Ask him. But we don't, because we don't want to, we don't want to know the answer. We want those tight jeans. We want that attitude. We want what we want. We don't want to look like a Christian. I don't know what a Christian looks like. Oh, so uh, is it the, 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 I don't know. You know, I, I get an idea of what, you know, but come on. You know, if you have the Spirit of God in you, you're going to feel it. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. The other day, I was in the I was and I'm going to confess this because the word of God says confess your sins one to the other and any any great image you had of me please blow it out of the water hopefully this will blow it completely out of the water I was in the car with a, a very dear friend and we happened to be talking about somebody and I had been trying to keep it together I had been desperately trying to baptize my mouth and I failed because I really wasn't trying. It was in there and it wanted to come out. And I dropped it. The bomb, all right? And as soon as it came out of my mouth, if I could have gone like this, I actually, I was behind the wheel of the car and I went over like that. I, I felt like this thing in here. And I went like, I actually winced. I said, oh God. Oh God. Now that's not to go like this. It isn't. It really isn't at all. But back before Christ, that wouldn't have even been an issue. It wouldn't have even been an issue. And that's not to say, well, I'm this whole, no, I'm not. There is so much sanctification that needs to be done in me. I pray that I live long enough. <clears throat> I do. I pray that, 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 you know, at the rate that he's going, he's going quick. I'm telling you, this put me to bed. For the, I, was, I was laid out with this. I'm going to be very honest with you. I didn't even want to get up because I was afraid that even if I went to the bathroom, I was going to sin. I was, I, and I know that wasn't from God. It was that holiness. Do you understand holiness of God? We talk about the presence of God. Do we really understand what the presence, the presence of God hit, we would be laid out. We wouldn't be able to pick Mom, our heads up. Mom, Moses' Mom, hair turned white Mom, at just the shadow. Mom. Just the shadow. Mom. We would be laid out. But there is no holiness because we don't have a oneness with God because we don't want it. So what do we do here? We're back to square one again. You have to make the decision. Okay. 
Okay. And I wish with all of my heart, I really, really okay. knew that okay. we could be, I could just open everybody up and say, get it, get it, get it. You know, and oh. shove it in. <laughs> Open your mouth, young people. Ba shove it in. Ba Eat it. Devour it. Ba ba ba. Because it does change you. It radically changes you. Thank God. Ba Thank God we get pierced. Thank ba God. I pray that you young people, when you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, I pray with ba all of my heart that the conviction of the Holy Spirit comes so hard ba on you that you won't be able to lift your heads. Because that's when I know. That's when you'll know you have a relationship, a connection to God. You're not one yet, but you're on the right track. <coughs> but I know that there's a way to go. And I know that narrow way is hard. It ain't easy. But it's so worth it. It is so... I wouldn't trade... I wouldn't trade a second... Of this, of, of sanctification, of that stripping away, of that incredible, like, ah, you know? I wouldn't trade a second of it for the best vacation, the most amount of money, whatever you Amen. think is good. I wouldn't Amen. trade it for a second. I wouldn't trade it for a second. Paul says at the end of this, he says, Paul states, I don't... I don't do the things that I should do. And the things that I should do, I don't do. You know, that whole thing, like, I, should, I, I shouldn't be doing this, but yet I do it. And the things that I should be doing, I don't do. I understood that immediately. Immediately. You know? I understood it. But you know what he says at the end? He doesn't leave it there. And I'm not going to leave you in that place. He says, thanks be to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the middle, the, 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 the little to the left, the little to the right, the little off center. When you come to the decision and commit on it and act upon it, then as Oswald Chambers says, all that Christ wrought for me, in other words, all that Christ did for me, all that he did for me on the cross is now in me. It doesn't stay up there. It's not doesn't stay in here. It doesn't stay up here on 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 the first on the third Friday, uh, Saturday of every month or the or, or the Sunday when we have communion or every Sunday or every Tuesday or every Thursday and we walk in thinking okay you know I got it I'm in church. It's like when we get up to heaven and and and, and, and we're up there and, and, and he looks at us and he, God forbid would ever say you know. Who, who are you? Could you imagine? I don't know you. Did you know me? When you were down here, did you know me? Because you know what? I don't know you. Depart. Depart from me. And we'll be going, but wait, I went to church on Sunday. Didn't you see me in there? I tithed. Didn't you see me teach Sunday school? Didn't you see me up here leading choir? Didn't you see me? Didn't you see me? Didn't you see me? No, I didn't see you because I didn't know you. Go. Go be with your father and your daughter. Because that's who you've been serving. And that's who you know. I want to. It makes me sick. Mm -hmm even say it. When you take that commitment, when you decide that you're going to become a Christian, and I don't know where you're at right now, and as I said earlier, that's not that's that's not my judgment call. I, I, that I'm not God. All I know is that we are known by our fruit. You know, and it's not the perfect holy thing. That's not, that's it, it, in, in the sense of, of I keep going back to my old language. It is, we are called to be holy. Make no doubt about it. But we're called to be real. And we're called to be truthful. And, and he hates phoniness. He hates it. He would rather, I believe, have you do what you're going to do. And call it for what it is. 
can pretend because it doesn't work. He can see right through it. Right through it. Right through the what? The heart. We talked about the heart, right? What does it say? We are to love the Lord with what? All of our mind. All of our what? All of our heart. All of our strength. I read an interview with a professor from Oxford University, a Christian professor of mathematics and the philosophy of science. That's what he teaches. And the interviewer asked him, what about the, the Christian kids that are coming now up into university level? And he says, he's worried. You know why he's worried? Because as they accelerate, and, I, and, and I'm all for education. Trust me when I tell you, and, and I, I, I am. All right, in Jesus' name, I am. When they begin to accelerate in university, they lose ground in their walk. Mm -hmm. It's like they excel here and go back here. They cut off all relationships, all fellowships with other people. They stop going to church. They're now at university. I now have too much work to do. I now have this, 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 and this to do. I don't have time. I pray for you, parents. I really do. It's a tough world. There's a lot of choices that you're going to have to make for your children. A lot. And, and I'll tell you something else. For young people, it is not your parents' responsibility to walk with God. They life. They birthed you. They nurtured you. They grew you up. They trained you, they raised you the best that they could. They imparted in you. In the year and a half that I'm here, I have seen more impartation in the youth of this church than I have seen combined at, at, at the place where I work and the other two churches that I have been. And they were much bigger churches. Fasting, praying, imparting, spending time. Shame on you if you don't come out to be a Christian. It is your responsibility, not your parents. Bottom line, parents, get a word on this. You keep in part, you keep praying. I would never tell a parent to stop praying. You intercede and you pray on a regular basis. And then leave it at the foot of the cross. Because you and him are like this. And he knows what your needs are, regardless of what you see. Amen. Because you're going to see some stuff if you haven't already. And you're going to hear some stuff if you haven't. But remember who you're hearing. Remember who you have to listen to. Remember who you have to see. Remember what's in this word. And hold on to it. Because I'm telling you, you will be tested. But God, but God, but God, they owe you nothing. And I know that's hard to hear. I have a 37-year-old at home. I know that's hard to hear. Because I did, I told you, I grew up in that Italian culture. The mamas, the Madonnas, you know, the whole bit, the mamas were everything. Moms and moms and moms. And I understand respect and I get, well, I, I get all of that, but no. 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 Our children were entrusted to us. We were always supposed to give them back to him. Hallelujah. Always. His design was never to put them up here. Ever. Ever. The only person up here is Jesus. That's it. That's it. Husbands, no. I don't care who they are or how holy they are or how wonderful they are, how blessed they are, how fantastic they are. They were never meant to be up here. It was God. This is reserved. All of it. For God and God. Let's bow our heads. I have a, a song that we're going to play in a few minutes. It's not relax. We're, we're going to pray right now. I pray that this word tonight would go in deep as it went in deep for me. I pray that you allow the God that you serve, the God that you know, no matter how much or how little you know him, that you would know him even more, that you would become one with him, that you would be indistinguishable, that where he began and you left off, was indistinguishable. There was no difference. There would be no boundary. 
that when when we look at each other we see Jesus no time for jealousy no time for how come I didn't get chosen to do this how come I, I she does that and he does this and I've been here longer none of it that gets buried and crucified and it stays buried and it stays crucified climb up on that cross and crucify yourself with God no and allow him to be him instead of you being you or you thinking who he should be for you. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for each heart that is here, O oh God. I pray, Father God, that you would, O oh Lord, O oh Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Shine it. Shine your light. Illuminate their hearts, our hearts, continuously, O oh God. You said in your word that we are to walk in the light as you are in the light. But God, even now, even now, there's some that are still in such darkness, God, and they're still making righteous excuses and still filled with such agony and pride and resentment and hurt and betrayal and disappointment and oh god apathy and worst of all lord they're filled with their own knowledge of who they think they are but god tonight Tonight is going to be different, Lord. Tonight, God, when you knock on their door, on their heart, God, they're going to let you in, God, because they want more of you and less of the less and less and less and less and more and more of you. More of you, Lord. More of you in their homes. More of you in their jobs, Lord. More of you in, 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 in wherever they put their feet. Foot, Lord as soon as they leave here God that you go with them that you don't stay here in this building nah. that we go with God and we walk in his marvelous light because that's where we want to be we want to be in the light Lord because you are in the light we want to walk, God, just like I'm walking with this baby, God. And he's looking up. And he's not letting go. And this is what we want to be like, Lord God. Father, I pray now, God, in Jesus' name, God, for every heart here, that you would have your way. And Lord, more than that, your will be done, God, that we would become your will. That it would not be just again a separate thing of your will my will lord but it's we are your will oh god we are your will because you and them are one you and i are one and lord if it has to happen all over again you'll do it all over again Pull them up out of their sewers, God. Pull them up out of their cesspools, oh God. God, breathe on them. Put your mouth on them, God. Be intimate with them. Fill up every, every, every wound, oh God. Bind it, oh God. Bind it, my God. Bind every gaping hole, oh Lord. Sew it up, God. After you have, with your word, and that double-edged sword, which is your word, after you have cut it deep, oh God, and exposed all the filth and all the sewerage, God, cut them deeper, Lord. Cut us deeper. To the bone and to the marrow, God. To the very marrow of our bones, oh God. So that we could say, dry bones arise. Arise, dry bones because now we have the breath of life in us. 
Now we have our bones, our sinews, our marrow is Jesus Christ's DNA. Our blood is your blood. We are identified with you because we are now crucified with you. Joyfully, gladly, completely. And God help us when we want to get down off that cross and do it our way. Help us, God, to remain with you and you in us forever until you call us home or until you come back. Oh, Father of of all lights, Lord, please search this hearts right now. And Lord, help us, oh God. Help us, God, because we are a desperate, desperate group. I'm not ashamed to say it. I am desperately seeking you, oh God. While you may still be found, Oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don is going to 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 put this on and I would I would just love it if we could just listen really li and let this go in. Guys, let it go in. This is we are we are we are in it for for life. We're, we're in it. We cannot continue on the way that we're continuing on. We cannot we cannot keep coming here every Sunday, every Friday, every Tuesday, every Thursday. We can't. There has got to be a change. There's got to be a difference. Otherwise, Christ died for nothing. For nothing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you sing... Think about what you're saying when you say yes and amen. Don't be so quick to say yes and amen. Yeah. Don't be so rote. Don't be so cavalier with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we repent. If you need to repent, repent. Repent right now while it's still tonight. Repent. You have an opportunity. What a joy it is to repent. What a joy it is to get to have another chance. Oh, let the 